Well, we are in Ashland, Kentucky. This is a yard light here. They build them high up and the, the light shine out over the yard so the workers can, can see. And there's actually a tube that goes up with a ladder. And if it was, if I had a few beers, I'd just go up to the top. Matter of fact, I might do that later. But, uh, yeah, this coal forwarding yard here, all these empties going out east to the Appalachian. Well, it was a pretty good ride coming here. Got all my gear. It's kind of a little bit high spot. Oh, we got company. Hey, that, that looks like jaw tooth. Let's go. I think that's jaw tooth. Ah, oh, I thought you were a cop at first. That's your friend? Yeah. Hey, what are you doing? What's going on, man? Oh, wow. I didn't think you'd be up in this area. Hey, oh, nice to meet you. You too, man. Wow, this is pretty cool. <laughs> there he is. There's the legend. <laughs> Can't believe it. Just running. I'm over here checking stuff out. You checking out this, this light or something? Yeah. Oh, Showing how cool. it shines out over the yard. You can see that. That is awesome. That thing, you can see that for a couple miles away. Oh, yeah. It's huge. I like to climb up there. If y'all don't know who Jawtooth is, type in Jawtooth on YouTube. Uh, he's got a lot of really good videos. Yeah, and there's his hobo shoestring right there, too. He's got <laughs> tons of videos on there. Off trains all over the place. How long have you been doing that? Oh, God, uh, 32 years. Holy cow. You've been everywhere. Oh, yeah. I figured one of these days I'd probably bump into you, though. Yeah, I was thinking that, too, that last time. I went up through Cincinnati, like, what was it, a year ago? I think we had just missed each other. Oh, cool. So, um, would you just come up from Tennessee right now? Yeah, I, I, it took about 12 hours to get here from Kingsport. Yeah. And then, uh, I spent last night here waiting, but, uh, I'll, I'll get out today, though. Oh, that's cool. So you, you just came up and you got in last night and then... You camped out, I guess, by the tracks? And yeah, down there by that uh, memorial bridge. That, uh, okay, on the other side of town? Yeah. Okay. I figured I'd come down here and make some videos. Cool. I'm well, glad I did. Another train <laughs> way over there. There's all kinds of stuff going on here. It's kind of shooting into the sun a little bit. Yeah, the train over there. What's neat is this, this bridge, uh, tunnel goes all the way through the, through the yard underneath. Yeah, I was wanting to film that. I'm going to film that tunnel. I'm going to drive through there. You can drive my truck if you want. I'm going to drive through there and check it out. All right. 1949. Good. Yep, that's you screen right there. <laughs> Pretty cool. That goes like, what, a half mile underneath? Like a hundred tracks over it. Yeah. Yep. It goes one way most of the way. You pull in just a little bit and then the road gets really narrow. It's only two ways at both ends for about what 150 feet, something like that. And then it goes one way. Looks like there's a another one down there. Out. That was pretty cool down here in Racing, Kentucky. And uh, we're gonna check some stuff out here and I'm gonna drive through the tunnel too. See if we can shoot a video in there, even though it's kind of dark in there. Shoestring, there he is. Sure <laughs> There's jawtooth, finally. <laughs> and we're fixing to go underneath the entire yard. Uh, I got kind of paranoid there, folks. The policeman drove by. You can see him in my video, but he wasn't really um, looking at us. That was good. He was just checking traffic out. Okay, we're going to go through this tunnel and see what it looks like. Here we go. We hope no cars come the other way.
camp out and stay out of the rain. There's got to be 90 to 100 tracks over there. That might be a coke train. That look like coke cars. The old crummy C and O. There's the old. Switch tower, yard tower, too. Way to get up there. Here with Jaw Tooth. We're waiting on a tanker train to come. He's filming there from the truck. There's only like 30 cars, 40. Yeah, that's not a short one there. That, only one engine, he may be going to some refinery. Covington, Kentucky right now. With jaw tooth. There we go, there he is, <laughs> and the hour. We're over here watching the trains. Look at there. The Cincinnati's on the other side of the river here. He's crossing the Ohio River now. I'm gonna go down and get underneath that bridge and tell a couple of stories, I guess. Well, I'm fixing to go across the river into Cincinnati and film over by Queens Gate Yard. Uh, see if there's a little, little more action there. But over in Covington right now, that's CSX line going into Queens Gate. Cincinnati's, well, right there.
Anyway, I shall be in Queensgate in the next clip, I guess. Well, I'm, I made it to Cincinnati proper. Got on a city bus and went across from Covington. Let's see how far I can zoom up on downtown. I'm trying to get access to Queensgate Yard, but I'm kind of in the wrong spot. That's as far as I can zoom up. Man, that's still pretty good. But anyway, I'll find a way down to the yard, I hope, before dark. Hey. Well, I uh, made it to Chicago. Uh, I am on the BNSF Metra going to Cicero Yard. Uh, get down there, I'll make some some video of uh, BNSF. Uh, just $7 to take Metra. Gonna be pulling anytime. Yeah, I splurged and relapsed. I got a soda pop, my first one in like a month. But I figured I deserved it after making it all the way back. scared the crap out of me. There we go. Well, there is the BNSF yard tower. The yard's just beyond that tower. I'm fixing to walk down to a crossover down here by that overpass, the train on top, underneath and sideways. That's where we'll go next. Man, that'd be a nice ride. We got that for transport on a freight train. Man, that would be a number one sweet ride there to get in. I've done it one time before on an old car they moved. Ah, I made it down to the, the Y. That train in the last clip with that passenger car behind the unit going south right here. Just left. 
goes into downtown Chicago. If they can go south through here and eventually down to St. Louis. I don't I doubt this is where I was going. I'll have to I couldn't read on the side of that passenger car if it had a city name but it's not here it's that that's not a metro that almost looks like dallas that uh dark in dallas that white passenger car i've just come down to my normal hot spot here in cicero it's a nice little cubby hole you got a security fence over here and a security fence all the way down to Metra and then a concrete wall here. He's picking up a little speed. And there's a Sam's Club in Walmart not far from here. Let's see if I can zoom in on the yard down there now that that train's out of the way. My screen's so dim, I, it'd be hard to tell what I'm actually looking at. But a lot of times they'll come all the way up to that signal pole there and stop right here. Uh, well, the first time I ever come here about uh, I don't know 20 years ago I did have a date on that one but yeah you can sleep back here and no one will bother you there's too many obstacles in the way for somebody to come out here to risk getting hit by a car you gotta cross a couple of roads of course I don't do that jaywalking anymore so it took a little while to get down here to cross at the crosswalk but there's really no shoulder on that road up there so you kind of got to play frogger You can see that curve now heading south right there then a rail crossing up top and then there's another crossing that first bridge that runs right there I think we got another one coming out unless that's Metra I think it's I am. Yeah, it's a short drag. They're probably dragging these I, I am containers to another I am yard. Those are only low power jeeps on the front there's still a little snow left not much 
Boy, it's a big old tree. I can't tell if it's a cottonwood or what. Oh, I wish I was over there across that fence and go lay under it. There's something magical about laying under a big tree and looking straight up at all the branches. Yeah, I broke my darn tripod yesterday. I was with Jawtooth and uh, that bottom clip broke off. So now I'm gonna have to figure out maybe a couple of ponytail holders I could wrap around it maybe. Man, that's a long freight. That's that same one from the last clip. Exhausted last night. I slept about four hours. And I'm still a little shaky right now Yeah, he's going to that other IM yard. See he didn't take that curve to the south There's another one over by the ballpark south of downtown He may be gonna back up and grab another cut of them Yeah, I got to turn around today and go back south. I got to get back to Tennessee by the 11th or the 10th. Got to see my dad on the 11th. So I got to get back. Now, uh, I just got a $112 plane ticket one way nonstop from Johnson City. Cross Cities Airport to uh, DFW, and my dad's gonna come pick me up at DFW Airport, spend a few days. Uh, that beats trying to get there, taking a week to get there on freight train. It was just $112 one way non stop flight. It was like a three hour flight, two hour, 50 minutes. Yep, he's backing up to get another cut. I thought that's what he was going to do. When he slowed down, I was like, yeah, he, he's still going to that other IM yard I was talking about. He's just got to pick up another row of these. He's backing down a different track to pick those up. Yeah, but when I get done visiting my dad, uh, I'm just going to ride the trains back. That way I can get some East Texas train hopping videos and camping. Uh, I'm going to try to g avoid going through North Little Rock, Memphis. So I'm going to uh, just go from like Longview to Marshall to Shreveport to Jackson. Then up Anyway, uh, God, if it wasn't so late in the day, I'd just lay out and have a couple of hour nap right here. There's not even any home bomb trash. There's some stuff that's blown out, like across the field. Oh, he's backing pretty far down. They must be way on the other end. Yeah, if you look on that, those two engines on the bottom, when he gets closer, I'll show you. He's only got four axles, four drive wheels, instead of six. You can tell by how it sounds. It's lower power.
There we go, we got one. I mean, I can't tell, I think it's a Metra. Going to Union Station. Well, I can remember all the mistakes I made when I was a greenhorn and I first started traveling. I think the biggest lesson not only I learned, but everybody that traveled for any length of time, every town has. We call them home bums. They're the local homeless that never go anywhere except for the local library and the Salvation Army. That's all you ever really see them or under a couple of bridges. I think it was in Beaumont or Lake Charles. That night I got into town after dark. So I rolled out my sleeping bag under a bridge and all night I kept I kept smelling crap and uh you know I was like man what is that so I, I just went to sleep the next morning I'm rolling up my sleeping bag and there it was I had rolled out my sleeping bag right on a pile of poop one of the home bums left Man, I was so mad. Oh my God. And I was almost out of water. I didn't have any to wash my hands. Yeah, I was just rolling that sleeping bag up and I, it was, oh man. It, it only takes you one time to learn to shine your light and check to make sure you ain't rolling out and something like that. Oh my God. Uh, yeah, it was Beaumont right under I-10 bridge there at the yard kind of where that Pearl Brewery is in Beaumont but it's, it's almost warm enough to get out of this coat yeah a lot of people ask me what's my favorite state to ride in and what's my least favorite well least favorite state it's Florida. That's because the police there are just a lot of homeless people go to Florida in the winter time. And so it, it's just like you have 30 homeless people every square mile just about everywhere in Florida. But Baldwin, west of Jacksonville is all right. Tallahassee and Pensacola is all right. Uh, my favorite state besides Alaska is uh, probably Michigan and Arkansas, I guess, because of the Wachita and Boston Mountains. Um, the, somebody had asked about jail. How many times have I been in jail for hopping the train? Oh, God, I, I don't know if I can count that high. But I tell you, the only time I've ever gone to jail for riding a train is when I was extremely drunk when I got caught. And that's why I got caught, because I wouldn't pay no mind to my surroundings. But Pensacola, Florida, in 1995, uh, that was the longest stretch I did. I went to court the next day, and the judge gave me a a thousand dollars fine and if a day in jail is 50 bucks towards your ticket so uh that was 20 days and they took my gear to the police station and me to jail and they let you out of jail at 12.01 a.m that way they get paid for a whole nother day uh of service yeah i get out at 12.01 in the cop shop didn't open until nine the next morning so I was gearless and fearless 
for about nine hours until I got my gear. Yeah, I had just grabbed on the side of a grainer there in Pensacola 20 days prior to that getting out. And I heard a cop underneath the bridge. He was parked there. I didn't see him when I got on. I'm still holding on the side of the ladder doing about eight miles an hour. And I heard him get on that PA system on the car and he goes, get off the train now. So I did, I was greenhorn, I was 25 years old. Uh, I just thought he was gonna ID me and let me go, give me a warning, this this was city cop, this wasn't even a railroad bull. And uh, he slammed me on the hood, cuffed me and stuffed me. Uh, been in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana, that Cato, Cato Parish Jail. I did four days. I was about a mile north of the yard, just south of Blanchard Cutoff. And we stopped for clearance to go in the yard. And there was a house like a half block away. And there was an old lady and old man on a porch swing. And I waved at them because I knew they were looking dead at me. And I seen her go inside the house, come out with one of them cordless phones. And I, I, I should have trusted my instinct and got off and walked and went and hid. But about uh, 15, 20 minutes later, we're still sitting there. I'm drinking a hot beer. And this cop comes flying through the mud, through a field, rooster tail and everything, right up to the train. And he goes, Come here, get off. And again, I thought I was just gonna get warned. Actually, railroad property is out of jurisdiction for city police. Uh, but you really can't argue that with them because they're gonna do what they want anyway. But you no, know, riding trains isn't about getting away with it. Uh, it might be for some, but I mean, you just have to co constantly think of that, though, that possibility of it happening. But I notice now there's less railroad bulls in the last 10 years than I've ever seen. There used to be a railroad bull in nearly every yard back in the 90s and late 80s. And most of them were really friendly. Matter of fact, in Pasco, Washington, there used to be an old bull there named Manny. And, uh, he'd come up, he'd take your picture with a Polaroid camera and uh, put it in his files in case they found your body up the tracks, they could identify you. And if you had something cooked up, mulligan stew or whatever, he'd sit down and eat with you. Bullshit. Have a sip of beer. Then that Roger Dodger they called that boy in uh, Klamath Falls, Oregon, K Falls. He was he was all right. Then you had a bull in Sparks, Reno, Nevada, named Hitler. Then that old mean bull in Colton, outside of L.A. Then there's a a woman bull in North Little Rock with a canine dog. She's probably the meanest bull I ever seen, man. But for the most part, they're, they're all right. They're more than fair with you. Yeah, later today I'll be, I'm gonna go to the other side when it, once it gets dark and I'm gonna catch on that curve. Cause he's going real slow around that curve. I can likely get him and that'll put me back on a south, southward track. Not really sure what that is. It looks like maybe a church.
maybe look on Google Maps and comment in the comment section what that what you think that is. That's looking southwest. Now, I thought I heard a train horn. It, it didn't sound like a road a road engine. Once you've been doing this over 30 years, you can tell by the horn on a train what type power it is. You can tell uh, Amtrak engine from freight engine, yard engine from road engine. So I'm, I'm going to go to Sam's Club. I think I remember my old car. I don't have the card anymore. Uh, I got to get some train food. Yeah, I got some... I don't know if you could see them good in the last video, but some new train stickers. That came with the knife Adam sent me, and I'll show you that knife here in a minute. finally found an old I see I like the original one better it's got a black line through the rail head like this and the dot the eye on the dot on the eye is on this side it used to stand for Illinois Central that this half was the C and the first half was the I and this dot was over further to the left I guess when I first started riding, ICG was my favorite railroad. But yeah, let me get dig that knife out. I didn't know they had a knife this small. Yeah. It's a little baby case. Yeah, Adam got that for me. I love it. I just left my blue and, and took this one, and they're all really remarkably sharp. I don't even think I'm going to finish that. I, that's too much dang sugar. It's been about five weeks since I had a any kind of soda pop. Yeah, me and my dad, uh, he said, because it's going to be about noon... Well, 11 a.m. when I get in on the 11th in Dallas. And he said, we're going to go to a Whataburger and eat. And that's my favorite, like, fast food restaurant. I don't know if you call it fast food. And their hamburgers are like five bucks, but good God almighty, they were good. I remember when I was a kid, I thought I thought it was called Water Burger. I was like, well, that doesn't sound good, a Water Burger freeze it and have an ice burger I guess you know they used to have a a set of cameras back in the early and mid 90s they used to have on the edge of all railroad yards there was this big silver box that had a camera pointing out at an angle and it had big bright lights that shone out you could feel the heat from them but they, they took them out in the last 20 years, 15 years. I don't see them anymore. I think it was for reading the car IDs as the train went by. But now they have what's called an AEI detector. And I got one in Pittsburgh, Kansas video. One of my old ones where I'm showing an AEI detector and how it reads the cars going by. I'll have to show that next time I walk by a car show the little strip on it well somebody lost lost a beanie I don't think that blew over here super or something anyway uh, I think I'm gonna move it's starting to get a little chill I yeah I'm, I'm trying to remember some uh, things people have asked me in the comments to do video on I get a lot of wild animal uh, requests, like, what's the worst animal I've ever seen out while camping, but I've seen a 
couple of bear, I've seen one in Alaska crossing the yard way up. I, I thought it was a big giant dog at first. And uh, I've seen a, a couple of grizzlies way up in Prudhoe Bay in 92 when I worked up there for a couple of weeks. But uh, you can't get caught feeding any animals up there on the, the what is that, Enwar, uh, Enwar Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. And they had a lot of, a lot of Arctic fox up there. If you get caught feeding the fox or any wild animals, they fire you, send you back. But probably the most troublesome animal is a, is a skunk. I mean, I don't care. You can be in on the moon. You could be in the North Pole. You can be in Chad, country of Chad in Africa, and, and you'll see a skunk. But uh, probably Central Texas has more skunks than anywhere I've ever seen. And when you're riding the train, you always know when one's around, because they'll be walking the tracks, and the train come by, and it'll it'll get scared and squirt the train and oh golly but, uh, I've never been like sprayed directly but my dog Bubba in Schenectady New York I woke up about two or three in the morning something just told me wake up and Bubba was already keened in on that uh, skunk that was perched on the rail I said no no as soon as, as soon as I said no, Bubba jumped at it and got it right in his face. And I caught about 20% of it. I swear that took a good two months. But, and I tried everything, tomato and lemon juice. It just takes time. About the amount of time from the Big Bang to now. Golly, that, and it's different than the way it smells when you smell one. It's almost like chemical uh, then in Brownwood Texas I got off BNSF there and camped in the woods and I bought a big old sack of hamburgers and had a few left over for in the morning when I went to sleep I put that bag by my head usually I elevate my food my perishable food hang it in the bucket from a tree or hang it from a sack and I remember hearing that plastic bag or that paper bag rattling. I woke up and when I lifted my sleeping bag up over my head, that's what scared that skunk. And it it made a weird noise. I, I didn't know skunks made it made that noise. It was it was like whoop whoop. You know, I have seen that silhouette of his tail go up, and I was like, oh shit. But uh, it it didn't squirt me. It just took off waddling. I've never really seen a skunk run. They just kind of, two seconds later, forget why they're walking that way. I don't know what, how, how much their short or long-term memory is. Kind of like a catfish, I guess. They forget you caught them an hour later. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping this, yeah, that train I heard, I was telling about the sound of the horn while ago, that was just, there was a little yard dog I'm hoping he'll back up. Actually, I think he is backing up. That train right there, he's pushed about 40 cars out. And that little engine was just throwing shit out. It was just really groaning trying to get up that grade. Ah, seeing which way. Nah, it's going on. I thought he was getting ready to back up, but it was a little four-wheeler. We call them the yard dogs. They're smaller than the Jeeps. And like I said before, a Jeep is your GP engines with the four axles. And they just mostly use them for short range. But anyway, that's it for now, I guess.